Hello everyone, as you know, Doom Tower is coming out, expected the 7th of December, and what we have here is extremely interesting and might be really This is the preview video dropped by Raid Shadow Legends. It's the Doom Tower, I have not watched it yet, so let's all jump in and see what we have. Hey summoners, with the holiday season upon us, we're kick the celebrations early taking a deep dive into the doom tower plus a couple extra stocking stuffers the tower is due to come out very soon all the key mechanics and balance are fully tested and locked in so no more teasers in this video we'll be talking mechanics format structure rewards and everything else you might want to know about it let's jump in the doom tower is an entirely new gameplay mode it's a monthly set of challenges that offer a whole host of bosses, items, and rewards. In a nutshell, you clear floors of enemies one by one to get to the top of the tower. You beat a load of bosses, and you'll farm a pile of materials for awesome new artifacts. The concept is simple, but let's dig into how this thing works. Let's start with the format. First, the tower has two different... Okay, I've just got to say it before the format stuff comes in. I am liking the graphics, I'm liking the look of the bosses, I'm liking the details of what they've been working on. Visually, it's quite spectacular. Difficulties, normal and hard, each with their own rewards. They're both open from the get-go, and you can choose whichever difficulty you want to play on. Or, you can jump back and forth between the two. Second, there's a one-month time limit. You have a month to reach the top and win your rewards on both difficulties before it resets. When it resets, a new rotation begins and the cycle starts again. Third, there'll be multiple rotations. After the tower resets, the order of the bosses, the enemies on each floor, and the rules in the secret rooms will change, meaning a new challenge and a need for new strategies. Fourth, it doesn't take energy, it takes keys. There are gold keys and silver keys, and you'll get ten of each every day. It doesn't sound like a lot, but you don't actually lose your keys if you fail a run, so these 20 go a long way. Gold keys are for battling on normal floors and boss floors, while silver keys are for secret rooms and for re-entering and farming boss floors. Okay, straight off, I like the monthly cycle thing. I really like the fact that it just renews. So if you get so far in one month, you will have the chance next month to crack on. I like the secret rooms, I also like the fact that every, the bosses get shuffled around so you never know where they're going to be. I think the the randomness of all that will test everyone, potentially making us better players. The keys, secret rooms, farming boss floors, etc. Then the gold keys, I like the fact that they're separate. So you can choose to do of whichever one you want to do so that's pretty nice so that's the core format now let's tackle the structure the tower is broken up into three different types of levels floors secret rooms and boss floors to get to the top of the tower you'll need to beat 120 floors each containing three waves of tough enemies you can use your gold keys to get in but for these normal floors you'll only get a reward the first time you beat the floor in any rotation you can replay them again without using any keys, but you won't get any rewards from it. Then, every 10th floor is a boss floor, where you'll fight against some of the hardest bosses Raid has to offer, culminating in a big finish. A battle against the tower's final boss on floor 120. Boss floors are special and have two layers of rewards. First, you use your gold key, you beat the boss for the first time, and you get a little reward. Then, you switch to silver keys, and you can actually farm boss levels for special farming rewards forge materials these forge materials are exclusive to the tower and let you craft artifacts you can't where else as you work your way up the so interesting how they've done it it's good that you can beat him it's also good that you can farm certain levels as we are aware but there's four new sets of came out on the forge only obtainable from Doom Tower, so you are going to need those keys to farm that gear. Be it from secret rooms, bosses, wherever it is, you will need those keys. So crack on it. So far, it sounds sounds quite promising. Tower, you'll also unlock these things: secret rooms. 
These are optional challenges and don't need to be completed to climb the tower. In other words, if you can't beat one, it won't block your progress. Secret rooms can also be completed in any order, meaning you can skip a room and come back to it later. You have 12 secret rooms on each difficulty, all with special rules to complete them, like only using rare champions or only using champions from a given faction. You can see a few examples of what these rules might be on your screen right now. Instead of using gold keys to beat them the first time, you'll use silver keys to enter secret rooms, but just like normal floors, you can't actually farm secret rooms. You'll only get a reward the first time you beat them on every rotation, but that reward is awesome. Secret rooms will drop fragments for champions that are exclusive to the Doom Tower. You won't be able to get these champions anywhere else, only through fragments found in secret rooms. We'll touch on who these are a little later. If that's not enough, they'll also drop some extra silver keys to make beating them even more worth your while. Back to the tower, let's summarize what we've covered. There are three types of levels, floors, secret rooms, and boss floors. You can't farm normal floors or secret rooms for extra rewards, but you can farm boss floors. Counting both difficulties, that's 240 floors with 24 boss fights and 24 optional secret rooms. That's a lot of content. And to work your way through all that, you get 10 gold keys and 10 silver keys every day. You'll get your 20 keys at midnight UTC on the dot. Now, you can't buy Doom Tower keys at the shop, and you can't get more for gems. So using your daily allowance of keys is important if you want to beat the tower before the rotation ends. With some basic math, or with a calculator, if you're me, you'll see that you can beat one difficulty every 12 days, or 24 days to beat both. And that's if you manage a perfect run and never fail or lose a battle. But remember, you only lose keys when you successfully beat a level. So if you lose, it's okay. You just learn a lesson and get to try again. Actually, let's hit pause for a second here. This brings us on to something we'd like to talk about before we go any further. The difficulty of the, uh, difficulties. The Doom Tower isn't supposed to be easy. It's end game content. It's supposed to be challenging and requires some figuring out. But it's also not supposed to be unfair or something only Raid's best players can complete. We want the tower to be a fun, challenging mode for you to sink your teeth into on a regular basis. We're really looking forward to your feedback on this, so don't hold back. Oh, here's a quick tip. If you are stuck on a level or finding it difficult, you can always hit this handy Best Teams button to see all the best performing teams that have successfully beaten a level. All right, those are the core mechanics. Now, let's talk rewards. Naturally, you get a reward for every single floor or room you beat, but a lot of those will be items you already know. And so, the rewards that we're looking at potentially will be pieces for gear sets, fragments for champions, all champions. I've heard they're pretty good. I've not actually listened to them, listened to their moves, all this. I've just seen it in other content creator videos but so far I kind of like the structure of what I'm seeing I've seen a doom tower that's broken apart into rooms boss fights secret rooms it has a way of working it looks like there's a lot of thought on it uh, and the rotation of bosses is pretty cool it's really exciting just to see how end game it is though because, yeah, it's meant to be end game, but you, you would expect to have a lot of the player base kind of get respectively far. So, if you're a new player, will that hinder you? But so far, I mean, the videos show us good stuff, but we haven't got the good stuff yet. It's coming out. So, I'll watch the end of this few minutes. So let's get into the specifics of some of the unique drops in the Doom Tower that you can't get anywhere else. First, artifacts. After you beat a boss once, you'll be able to re-enter boss levels with your silver keys and start farming them for forge materials to craft some brand new artifact sets. Fatal's pretty simple, but very flexible. It'll be able to fit into a lot of builds as a second set for a little extra stat boost. Untouchables next, two turn immunity, plus a resistance boost to make it harder for the other team to strip that immunity buff. An extra 40 resistance can make a big difference, and I think we'll see a lot of untouchable sets popping up soon. Now, the two real special ones, Affinity Breaker and Frostbite. If you're tired of dealing with bad affinity matchups, or if you ever wished your spirit champion was basically a void champion, Affinity Breaker is going to be your best friend. It's basically got a 20% chance of completely negating a... Just a quick shout out here, because we're looking at this 15% chance to resist freeze, 
Except for a chance to place a freeze to provide an attacker. Uh, Pexneal is a new champion coming out. And she kind of works around. She's in a team. So they'll get frozen. She can steal that freeze better than herself. So she could be a really crucial champion to go for at Christmas. If you can't farm any of this frost style gear. Now, just a heads up that Pixel un until you get this bottom set could be a good good uh use for you. Bad affinity matchup and turning it in your favor. Frostbite's another real unique one. It's got a chance of blocking a specific debuff, freeze, as well as throwing one back on whoever's attacking you. If Tormund's been kicking your butt in the arena, you might want to invest in Frostbite. It's going to be real useful against the Frost Spider as well. These all have awesome potential, but to farm them efficiently, you're going to want to get as high up in the tower as you can. The difficulty gets tougher as you get higher up, but you'll also get a lot more materials. So get after it. Now, let's talk exclusive champions. As we mentioned, this is where secret rooms come in. Using your silver keys to beat secret rooms will give you unique champion fragments you can't get anywhere else. Here's the important part to remember. Their fragments will drop from secret rooms in a predefined order, so you'll need to collect all the fragments of the first champion on a given difficulty before moving on to the second, and so on. Now, we've already covered the skills these champions have in a previous update highlights post, so we're not going to dissect these guys in detail here. But if you want to judge a book by its cover, here they are. These are all the champions you'll get on each difficulty and the order you'll get them in. Information. And finally, we have the tower rankings. Each difficulty has its own rankings, and they're split into two main categories, global and clan. Players will be ranked according to their progress and how quickly they climb the tower. You'll only show up in the rankings after you pass floor 10. So don't worry if you don't see yourself right away. At the end of a rotation, you'll also see a pop-up when the rankings are finalized, just before they get wiped and reset. If you've ever wanted to compete to see how fast you can make your teams, now's your chance. That's it for the Doom Tower, but we did promise you a couple stocking stuffers too. We're also releasing these special holiday champions to help ring in the season, as well as some festive decorations in your bastion. We've also rebalanced seven artifact sets that were a little underwhelming. We'll keep an eye on how these changes impact the game and the meta. The goal is to make sure every artifact set has its place and its uses, so give us a shout after you've had a chance to try them. There are also a lot of smaller quality of life improvements in version 3.0, so be sure to check out the update highlights. And that's where we'll end this video. I know what you're thinking, Doom Tower bosses, right? Don't worry, we'll be releasing a dedicated video covering all the Doom Tower bosses in just a few days, so keep an eye out for that. As always, hit like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to get notified when the boss... Alright guys, what do we think? What are we looking at? Are we excited? Has it been two years waiting for this to come out? Have they done you proud? Through the overall video, I like, like I say, I love, I like the way it's set out. I like the fact that secret rooms will not mess up your progress. I like the fact that the bosses will alternate. It will shuffle every month. I like the fact that the further up you go, the more fragments of a two-piece or four-piece set you're going to get, or it could be more for the forge. I do like that. I like the fact it's going to make us a better player. Graphics are pretty cool. And I think to... kind of It is end game, but I think they've put in some thought to making it kind of viable for everyone. So you may not complete it, but you may get to level 60. Or halfway up so for seeing that for the first time I mean the graphics in the video were probably the best thing about it but all the news was fantastic so it is coming out soon guys we've just got to wait for it when it comes out you know that people will jump on it like nothing they're going to be just going crazy on it or maybe one of them uh, but that's basically just a review of the video. Like I say, I never watched it before, so we all watched it together. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I'll see you next time.